So last year we covered one of Yodamaster's first NVMe drives, the Y7000, and I've been pretty happily impressed with it overall. I've been using it as the game drive in one of my small form factor computers for a while. It being four terabytes is fantastic. It's been performing really well. I'm overall pretty happy with it. Now, since then, they've actually released a more budget-friendly SSD option, one that does not have DRAM cache, so it makes it a little bit cheaper, and that is the Y3000. So they sent over the Y3000. This is the one terabyte model. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna do some tests. We're gonna compare it against a bunch of other NVMe drives that I have. Um, we're gonna take a look at its overall value proposition, and then we'll finish it off with if I suggest buying it or not. So first, let's quickly go over some of the specs of the Y3000. Now with all NVMe drives, some of these components are subject to change. Things like controllers and the actual DRAM chips are known to change on SSDs over time from all different manufacturers. I don't know if Yodamaster is doing this. And if they do communicate any kind of changes to me, I will update you guys in the pinned comment. But that's just the way that the market has seemed to work and in the industry as a whole. So now let's dive into the specs. So I have the one terabyte model, but there's also a 512 gig model and a two terabyte model as well. So I'm not actually sure what kind of NAND memory they're using on this NVMe drive, but I'm going to assume it's QLC due to the pricing. It doesn't make sense for this to be TLC or SLC due to the price. I'm gonna assume it's QLC. I've asked Yodamaster to clarify for me and I will put an update in the pinned comment as well um, as to what their answer is. This is a Gen 3 by 4 PCIe NVMe drive. It does not have a DRAM cache, even though the Amazon listing mentions an SLC cache. I think that's uh, incorrect. It does not have DRAM cache. The controller, which is an IG5216BBA, which is used on a few other NVMe drives by a few other companies, does not have DRAM support. So there's no way that this thing has DRAM cache on it. The endurance of this drive is rated at 300 uh, terabytes written. So not very much. It's pretty low compared to a lot of the other drives that we've tested in the past and ones that I have. And we'll go over that closer to the end of the video. I have a full comparison table that we'll go through, um, but that is quite low. The advertised sequential reads are about 3,100, whereas the advertised sequential writes are about 1,900, which again is a little bit lower than a lot of the other drives, but it is, quite a bit cheaper than a lot of the other drives as well. Um, it comes with a five year warranty. Regular price is $60, which comes out to about six cents per gigabyte. Um, but it's currently on sale right now for $49.79, which brings it down to about five cents per gigabyte. And if you wanna save even more money with this drive, stay tuned to the end of this video as I have an exclusive discount that I will be telling you about. All right, so we have the box here. I just wanna do a really quick unboxing because this drive comes with a few things that a lot of drives don't come with, which is actually kind of nice to see. The box itself is pretty simple, shows the advertised read speeds. Um, you know, you get a little bit of information on the back in both English and Chinese, nothing too specific though. And once we get this thing open, we will see that we have the drive here. Um, very simple design. The drive has all of the chips on one side, so it has a lot of compatibility. Sometimes when you have a couple of, of the chips on the back, either the controller or the actual DRAM chips, it can impact compatibility sometimes, so it's nice that everything is on the top side. Um, and we have just a very simple sticker. And then we also have some thermal compound, um, kind of like tape. You guys have seen this in a lot of my other videos. If you've watched my other videos, it's very common for these to be used alongside a um, heat shield. So if you've seen other NVMe drives, a lot of drives will either come with a heat shield model or an unheat shield model. And if you wanna take the heat shield off, you end up voiding your warranty a lot of the times. So this is actually kind of a nice solution. Um, it's not as pretty of a solution, but it's a nice solution because if you wanna put the heat shield on, you can. But if you're gonna be putting your NVMe drive into a slot that has its own heat shield integrated like on a motherboard, you can't have a drive with a heat shield on, it won't fit. So it's nice that you have that kind of flexibility. I'm really happy that they did that. And the other nice thing is they do give you an extra NVMe screw, which is cool. Um, these things are very easy to lose. They're very small. And once you lose them, they're kind of hard to replace unless you buy like 
50 or 100 of them. So that's nice as well. And they give you a screwdriver as well to go ahead and put that NVMe drive in. So that's kind of nice. And then we get a very basic user manual that talks about a few things. So now let's go ahead and get this thing installed. We'll get it initialized in my computer and we'll go ahead and run some tests and compare it to my other drives. All right, if you don't know how to, how to initialize a drive, you're gonna go ahead and type in partition. We're gonna go to create and format hard disk partitions. Once that finishes loading, it should pop up with the initialized disk. We're gonna go ahead and do disk one. We're gonna do a GPT. We're gonna press okay and it should initialize that drive for us. And there we go. And now we can go ahead and create a new partition. We're just gonna give it the letter D. Actually, I'm gonna do another one since I'm using the letter D, I just pulled it out. Put Q, we're gonna name this one Y3000. And we're gonna leave all this, the rest as the same and finish. And now, there we go, we have our drive all set up. All right, now let's quickly do a little transfer test. So we're just gonna transfer this file here, it's 1.5 gigs from my main OS NVMe into the Y3000. And we don't even get a loading bar with that, so that's pretty quick. Let's go ahead and try something that's 36 gigs and see how quickly that goes over. So, I mean, it's transferring at almost two gigs a second, which is pretty good. NVMe to NVMe. Um, relatively impressive, actually. And that's a pretty quick transfer for 36 gigs. So, overall, performing pretty well in real world, world scenario. Let's go ahead and do some synthetic tests, and then we'll go ahead and compare it to the other drives. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and run Crystal Mark and we'll be back when all the results are in. And now let's take a look at our results. I'm gonna to try to compare the Y3000 more to another Gen 3 drive that I have, which is the TimeTech 2 terabyte, empty to empty, so that it is apples to apples, much easier comparison. A lot of the other drives are ones that are currently in use, so they have data on them, and the performance changes once, once there is data on there. But overall, the Y3000 has actually performed pretty well if we look at it compared to the TimeTech, which is another inexpensive NVMe drive, they are around the same price per gigabyte as well, so that's something to keep in mind. The Y3000 does a pretty decent job. It outpaces the TimeTech in some of the tests. As we can see here in the sequential, the first sequential run, it outpaces it quite a bit, especially in the reads. Not as much in the writes, but still a little bit in the writes. But on the second test, the TimeTech ends up etching it out just a little bit. And the same kind of idea here is in the randoms where they're basically trading blows back and forth. It's pretty close. Um, the Y3000 only wins in the one random 4K write test, but they're really close, they're really similar. And honestly, that kind of pushes me to recommend either one of these pretty equally at this point. If we take a look at those results on an actual graph, we can see that the TimeTech and the Y3000 are again, pretty similar and pretty close to one another across the board. These two drives are priced similarly and they're performing pretty similarly as well. The only thing I think the TimeTech will have a more larger advantage over the Y3000 is once it gets to a more full capacity because the TimeTech does have a DRAM cache. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. The TimeTech also uses TLC instead of QLC. So again, I'm not exactly sure what kind of memory is on the Y3000. And once I do get the answer from Yoda Master, I will include that down in the pinned comment. Um, but overall, pretty happy with how it's performing as a drive at its price point compared to a lot of the other options. And that does bring us back to the pricing. So as I mentioned, regular price, this is around $60. It is currently on sale for $49.79, but Yoda Master has provided me a coupon code that I will have in the description, as well as in the pinned comment that will get you an additional discount and bring it down to around $45, uh, depending on the price at the time. When I was able to put it in, brought it down to about $44.79. 
And this is a really good price for a one terabyte drive. I think the pricing is really good for what it's providing. It is considered a more entry level NVMe drive, one that isn't gonna outperform anything, but for the price point, it does a really good job. And that kind of goes into what I would use the Y3000 for. Now I wouldn't use this as an OS drive. The endurance rating on it is not very high. It doesn't have a DRAM cache. So I would avoid using this one as a OS drive or a main operating system drive. But for games, it's a pretty good option here. It's again, it's really inexpensive and most games can't really take advantage of the super high speeds of a lot of NVMe drives, unless you're using things like rebar. That's a whole other, other conversation. Um, so as a game drive, I think it's good. If you wanna go ahead and throw this in an enclosure um, or a portable enclosure, like a, again, one from Yoda Master or something along those lines, I think it's a really good option as well. My use case is actually probably gonna be to put this in one of the USB hubs that I have that has an NVMe slot. I actually end up using that with my Steam Deck. So it'll be a really nice way to get a little bit of extra storage, maybe throw some bigger games that I use when I'm only using it docked and on my TV. Um, and it can be a really nice additional storage solution for that as well. So I think that's where this drive really excels. It's a great additional drive, secondary drive in your PC for games and media or whatever. It's also great to be used as a portable drive if you wanna go ahead and throw it into one of those enclosures. Now, with all that said, I'm really curious what you guys think about the Y3000. Is this something that you would be interested in as a product? Are you more interested in seeing more budget NVMe drives coming out of the manufacturers? Or do you wanna see more higher performance, more expensive drives coming out of these manufacturers? What kind of capacities are you interested in? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm really curious. Um, I honestly haven't gone too crazy on the NVMe side of things. I do have an, a lot of NVMe drives, don't get me wrong, but I haven't gotten any of the top of the line drives for anything because I honestly haven't personally seen a major benefit to a lot of them. Um, but I am also running a slightly older system. I'm not using rebar or anything like that. So that is also something that to keep in mind is that I'm not using NVMe drives to their full uh, potential, let's say. Um, but yeah, really do hope you guys found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, leave those down in the comment section below. I will be reading them as well as Yoda Master most likely as well. So feel free to leave those down there. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any of the other videos where I go ahead and cover products, talk about NVMe drives, enclosures, all that kind of stuff, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.